Good morning. It is wonderful to see all of you here today for this special day, this homecoming. Uh, thank you to those of you who uh, responded to invitations to, to come. and uh, We are really grateful for what this day means for First Church. Uh, 200 years of, of God's presence with us, um, uh, giving us opportunities to minister in the name of Jesus Christ, and there's nothing greater to do in the world than that. So uh, thank you for being here as we celebrate uh, what today means. Just a couple of announcements that I need to share at the beginning, and then I'm going to ask um, Charlie Hill to come up and share a, a, an announcement. If you uh, received an estimate of giving card this week in the mail along with the letter, uh, we'll be receiving those cards. You can, if you didn't bring it today, don't worry about it. Bring it another Sunday. You can drop it in the offering plate, or there's a box out in the lobby for you to drop those cards in if, if you would like. The parking lot, which we had hoped would be finished for today, is not um, uh, because of the weather that we had this week. We had a little rain. Um, and so that they're going to begin putting the curb around the parking lot, I believe, tomorrow. And hopefully uh, Wednesday we'll begin to pave and then by the end of the week have that project finished. So just want to let you know the parking lot will eventually reopen. Um, and please know that we are hoping that you will stay after this service for a meal that's being prepared over in the Family Life Center. I'm going to ask Charlie Hill to come up and make an announcement at this time uh, for leadership. First of all, all the hills are fine. I'm not making that announcement. <laughs> um, I am here to make an announcement on behalf of the leadership team. Uh, I felt, uh, you know, we're meeting we're having these informational meetings uh, November 20th and December 4th, and I didn't feel like, I, I, want, I want you guys to be there. So um, I, I felt like we needed to talk or just say more about why we wanted that to happen. So uh, on November, November 20th and December 4th at 2 p.m. in the afternoon in the Family Life Center, uh, members and friends of First Church are encouraged to attend uh, informational meetings to discuss changes in the United Methodist Church its Book of Discipline. Uh, the discussion will center on terms defined in paragraph 2553 of the 2019 Book of Discipline. The paragraph uh, title is Disaffiliation of a Local Church over Issues Related to Human Sexuality. The related issues referred to in the title are more numerous than human sexuality and include views on scripture interpretation, theology, and church governance. It is vitally important that members attend one of, two, one of the two meetings uh, to be informed to ask questions regarding these issues. At a date yet to be determined, at church a church conference will, um, attended by the district superintendent and a representative of annual conference, will be held for the purposes of voting regarding disaffiliation from the denomination. The date of the, the, date of the January church conference will be announced as soon as possible Please be in prayer for the United Methodist Church and for the First United Methodist Church during these important times. Thank you. 
Good morning. Will you join us as you are able and worship with us in song? Rise if you are able, please. <clears throat> From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, let the name of the Lord be praised. With now and forevermore, all of heaven and earth proclaim, let the name of the Lord be praised. Come now, all oh, you children, children, open up your eyes, where two or more are gathered, his presence will abide. Lift your voice to heaven. There's only one to glorify, Jesus Christ. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, let the name of the Lord be praised. Both now and forevermore, all of heaven and earth proclaim, let the name of the Lord be praised. Come now, all you sinners, lay your burden down at the feet of Jesus, where mercy can be found. In beautiful surrender, we're singing here on holy ground. How sweet the sound From the rising of the sun To the going down of the same Let the name of the Lord be praised Both now and forevermore All heaven and earth proclaim Let the name of the Lord be praised let the name of the Lord be praised. Be praised, King Jesus. Be praised for your goodness, for all that you've done. Be praised. Be praised in the highest. Be praised for your kindness. The name of the Lord be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, let the name of the Lord be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, let the name of the Lord be praised. Both now and forevermore, all of heaven and earth proclaim, let the name of the Lord be praised. Yeah, let the name of the Lord be praised. Let the name of the Lord be praised. For your mercy never fails me All my days I've been held in your hands From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will sing of the goodness of God been faithful and all my life you have been so so good with every breath that I am able I will 
will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in darkest night. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. I have lived in the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful. Oh, yes, you have. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. Your goodness is running after, it's running after me. is running after it's running after me with my life laid down I'm surrendered now I give you everything your goodness is running after it's running after me your goodness is running after it's running after me your goodness is running after running after me with my life laid down I'm surrendered now I give you everything your goodness is running after it's running after me and all my life you have been faithful and all my life you have been so together as we come before him in prayer. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. God has made it possible for us to know peace with him and with one another. Let's exchange that peace in Christ. The peace of Christ be with you. This, our, our scripture reader really doesn't need me to introduce him <laughs> because he's a very much beloved pastor, but I asked Pastor Don if he'd read scripture for us this morning. 
Let's read Psalm 100 and we'll read it responsively. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him, bless his name. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever. And his faithfulness to all generations. Anna comes forward, invite other children in the congregation to come forward this morning for our children's uh, moment. Hello, welcome, welcome, good to see you, good to see you. Um, so, hello, hello, more the merrier. Welcome, Emily and Ava and Sophie. Oh, it's good to see you all here. Move over and make room. Okay, I'm sorry, Nathan won't move. He just won't. That's his spot, and he's not going to move. All right. Okay, are we good? Is everybody good? Give me a thumbs up if you're good. All right, good. Everybody's good. Um, you know, the children's moment is not just for me to talk to you but I want you guys to be able to talk to them. Oh boy, only if you want to. And you only have to look at me when you talk. You don't have to look at them, see? All right, so I'm going to ask if any of you have had a God sighting this week, somewhere where you've seen God at work. And my boys are shaking their head no very furiously, so. Nobody has seen God at work this week? Well, how about that we wanted rain, or how about that we were dry and we got all that rain? Will you admit that? That's a God sighting. We're all going to go with that one? All right, good. Do you ever worry about anything? Do you ever worry, like were you worried that we weren't going to get any rain or worried what happens when we get a drought? Worry? I think it's something that we all do, and it's something that does not do any good whatsoever. <laughs> we will spend time worrying and worrying and worrying. Why? God, the King of Kings, he has us. He's got the whole world in his hands. Why do we worry? I don't know. I wish I knew. But I do know that the answer to worry is always God that we can always be joyful even when things are bad because we trust in God and we know that God keeps his promises he's faithful and he's loving and so we don't need to worry and I know that's easier said than done but try it this week try and remember that God the King of Kings has the whole world in his hands and there's nothing that we need to fear let's pray dear God I am so grateful for each children who are sitting and I just ask that you will bless them and keep them safe this week, help them um, to learn the lesson that even as an adult I struggle with, but not to worry, to put my trust safe. In your name we pray, amen. You can go sit down. As we just read a little bit ago, um, as, as Don led us in that responsive reading of Psalm 100, the Lord is God. He made us. We are his. And so uh, as his people, uh, we come into his presence with praise and thanksgiving. This morning we come before him as we give our tithes and our offerings with praise for all that he has done 
uh, in our lives and in the life of this congregation over 200 years. Uh, let's come before the Lord with gladness as we present to him this morning's offering.
Our lesson comes from Psalm 90, verses 1 and 2, 14 and 17. Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the whole world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. Satisfy us in the morning with your unfailing love, that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us, for as many years as you, we have seen trouble. May your deeds be shown to your servants, your splendor to their children. May the favor of the Lord our God rest on us. Establish the work of our hands for us, yes, Establish the work of our hands. This is the word of the Lord.
As we sang that hymn and as uh, listened to uh, the scriptures that Don read for us this morning and just thinking back um, about my short two and a half years almost uh, as a pastor, I might just imagined uh, what it must have been like for um, those Christians here in Chambersburg who first heard the preaching of a man named Christian Newcomer, who's recorded to be the first United Brethren clergy to preach in Chambersburg back in 1796. And he had a chance to do that every two or three years to come through and preach and that those listeners that he had early on would have come uh, again to hear him. And he, among others, were carrying that message in a circuit back in those days on horseback from one place uh, to another. And um, out of those preaching times, as he, and remember, okay, so we're thinking about Chambersburg. Think about Chambersburg as a couple of houses in the woods someplace along a, a road. There, there wasn't, uh, you know, it wasn't anything like what we have now. The population was small. It was kind of like Pioneer. We were a little bit out on the frontier back in the 1700s. And, and people like Christian Newcomer and other, pa and other circuit riding preachers were called by God to come out to the folks out here, out in the middle of nowhere, to tell them about Jesus and to talk to them about the kind of life that Jesus would make possible for them. One of the people who came to hear those circuit riders was a man named Samuel Huber. And Samuel Huber caught the miss. I'm trying not to take anything from Joyce, but because um, she's going to talk in a little bit. Uh, but he, he found Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior, and, God, and Jesus Christ called him into his service to go likewise and to, to preach. And it was, him, it was Sammy Huber who was mainly given, the, uh, who, who called together a church. 26 people meeting in John Oak's house back in 1822 and started first United Brethren Church. And then they built a little church. They built a, they built a building. Actually, they were in John Oak's house a little bit before that, but they built a building on this site, the first building made out of stone for 26 members, but it grew because God was in it. Because long before uh, Christian Newcomer Samuel Huber ever showed up. Long before that, there was someone was here, and that was God. Psalm 90 says, God, Lord, you've been our dwelling place throughout all generations before the mountains were born, or you brought forth the whole world from everlasting to everlasting. You are God. God was here, and God knew that this day would come someday, 200 years later, when we would get together in this 122 year old dedicated room sanctuary to, re to reflect back 200 years. God knew. You can't surprise God. And he anticipated our, our worship together this morning. And God is with us now. That's why we sang God is here. God is here in this place with table and font and pulpit, where the word has been spread, where the means of grace have been shared, where children have been taught, where people have heard the call and gone out. Because God's love, as verse 14 of Psalm 90 is true, that God's unfailing love is always here. It's, his love is characterized as unfailing, never ending, always present. Every day we have that promise. Every day we have that assurance. So we can sing with joy. We can be glad 
because God love, God's love never is going to let us down. It's interesting the way the psalmist says in verse 15, make us glad as many days as we've been afflicted, as many years as we've been troubled. God's balance is greater towards joy and mercy than it is towards anything afflicting or troubling to us. Because it's God's desire to show us, to show us his servants, what he can do, what he's able to accomplish. God's deeds, as the psalmist refers to them, have been present in this gathering of people for 200 years. Uh, there's an autobiography that Samuel Huber wrote, and it's worth looking at. You can get it on Amazon, I found out. And you can read about, and Chambersburg is in that autobiography a number of times. But God did things. God does things. God is doing things, and God will continue to do his deeds among us as we faithfully live to serve him. And so what we ask for in light of that is just that what he, the psalmist concludes with, that, that God's favor, God's compassion, God's blessing would rest upon us 200 years later for another 200 years that God would establish that God would make happen, that God would make solid and rooted, ensure the work that he gives us to do for Christ. And that's our prayer today, a prayer that we lift up to God, the God who is our home, the God who is always there, that no matter what, God is going to be God from everlasting to everlasting through days of change, through days of doubt, he does not change. He remains faithful through the course of all of history. You know, from the time this church began to today, God has always been the same. The same God with the same will, with the same purpose, with the same word today as he did 200 years ago. It's always been his plan for this church to be in this place for this time to send this message out to this people and this people around this church. That people might come to know the son he sent, Jesus Christ, and to know the salvation that God offers to all people through him. That is God's will. It has not changed. It will not change. God remains faithful to draw people to himself. His purpose has always been to love us, to redeem us, to empower us, and to use us to share his love, to share his word. And that will never change. Lord, help us today as we reflect on 200 years of ministry here to realize that it's just as fresh today, your calling, your ministry that you've entrusted to us, is just as fresh today as it was for Christian Newcomer and Samuel Huber and John Oak and everybody else who preceded us, to whom you gave a vision to establish a body of believers in this place to carry out your work. Lord, help us catch that afresh. We pray in your precious and holy name. Amen. Just want to share a couple of, uh, a number of things, and then Joyce is going to share some things, and Diana is going to share some things. But I wrote letters um, a few months ago to uh, people uh, who have been in a part of First Church in ministry. And before I do that, I just want to acknowledge uh, Mitch and Carol Galloway. They're sitting over here. So if you'd raise your hands anyway so we can see you. Uh, uh, Carol grew up in this church, I understand. And so uh, we're really happy that you two came to be with us. Mitch is a, is a United Methodist pastor, retired, but I don't think United Methodist pastors really ever retire. Um, they just put them out to pastor. So welcome. Glad that you could be here with us. We're really appreciative of your, your presence with us today. I also so I wrote to former pastors uh, and uh, associate pastors, and I got some responses. Uh, uh, pastor John Welsh, who was here for two years as an associate, sends his greetings and thanks for the years of ministry that you enabled him to have here while he was at First Church. 
and how you, you blessed him and helped him to go on to other ministry. I also received letters from Reverend uh, Thomas Webb, and he writes, Dear members of First Church Chambersburg, congratulations on the homecoming celebration of your 200th anniversary of ministry in Chambersburg. It was an honor and privilege to have served uh, as your pastor for 10 years, uh, one pastor in a long line dating back 200 years. I continue to have fond memories of my ministry at First Church. You are a loving, caring, dedicated people engaged in discipleship for Jesus Christ. You always seek to grow the church and to serve uh, your community. And he thanks you for allowing him and his family to be part of that ministry. I received a, a response from uh, Jason Tobias, or Josh Tobias, not Jason, Josh Tobias, who wrote, First Church Friends, Paul often begins his letters with words of encouragement, things like, I thank my God every time I remember you, or grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Jesus Christ, our Lord Paul's words of greeting in 1 Corinthians 1-4 remind us of you when he says, I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. Angie, Micah, Jocelyn, and I thank God for the years of ministry and mission we were able to partner with you and for the continuing connection we have through the grace of God and love and love for Jesus Christ. We are celebrating God's faithfulness with you as you celebrate a homecoming Sunday and wish you nothing but the light and love of God as he pours out his spirit on each of you. We also send greetings from the people of Faith United Methodist Church in Woodbury, Pennsylvania. Keep shining. Received this from Reverend Dr. Mark Stom. Congratulations on your 200th anniversary homecoming, I hope this letter finds you well, both as you celebrate your heritage of ministry and witness and as you look to the future. I regret that Margie and I are not able to join you for the occasion, but we've experienced health challenges over the past several months and are in various stages of recovery, and so we're not traveling right now. For now, we remember and give thanks to God from some distance. I was privileged to serve as your associate pastor from 1984 to uh, 1990 when you made space for this then much younger pastor to lead in ways appropriate both to my gifts and calling and to your vision for witness and mission. I remain grateful. Under your encouragement and that of Pastor Thomas Webb, you helped me identify further gifts and calling that led me on to doctoral studies in Boston University and eventually to my current work as professor of Christian worship at Perkins School of Theology, Southern Methodist University, where I'm serving in my 23rd year. As faithful Christians will do, you welcomed us and included us in your ongoing work. And then when the time was right, you blessed us and sent us forth into further mission. And he shares some other things in that as well. Uh, I received this from George Weaver. Thank you so much for your invitation to join you for the 200th anniversary of First United Methodist Church in your homecoming celebration. Our children were in elementary school during the time of our ministry with you. Nowadays, our son Daniel, who currently is employed as a software engineer for Facebook, and his wife Katie, an ordained United Methodist pastor, are living in California with our grandson and granddaughter. Beth, our daughter, lives in Wisconsin with her husband and their 13 and 10-year-old daughters. She is a professor at the University of Wisconsin-Madison where she teaches biochemistry and does cancer research. Please know that our family wishes you well as you celebrate the 200th anniversary year at Chambersburg First United Methodist Church and we'll continue to remember you in our thoughts and prayers as the good Lord continues to lead you in the days to come. All our best wishes for now and always. The Weavers. And then finally, I received this from uh, Bob and Bobby Schneider. Dear First United Methodist Church, we greet you in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit continues to comfort us as we mourn the loss of our son, Brian. We celebrate the joy of great memories of our years at First United Methodist Church. From the beginning, you were welcomed, we were welcomed into your fellowship and became Christ's followers. Through the married couple's Sunday school class, many lasting friendships were formed. Our children, Kristen and Brian, were nurtured and loved in their Sunday school classes as well. 
Thanks for your faithful prayers and financial support as we served on Young Life staff and then as missionaries in Kenya. Bobby and I cherish our memories of First United Methodist Church. We pray that you continue to grow and enrich the lives of those you are serving in his love, Bob and Bobby Snyder. I'll post these on a bulletin board uh, later this week here in the church. I'm going to ask Joyce to come and share some reflections on 200 years of ministry. Good morning, everyone, and thanks for coming. I also appreciate uh, the interest that has been shown by many people uh, in this celebration. We've been doing some special things uh, since early in the year, and so we feel as if it's culminating today. So what the first thing I would like to do is to honor uh, some folks that have been members of this congregation for 70 or more years. I believe we have identified seven of those, and of those seven, four are here today. I'm going to name them, and as I name them, I would ask you to stand if you can, and remain standing. But I have to tell you though, first of all, the first one on the list, and I was not going to take him off, and that was Harold Angle. He was a member here for 88 years. When I first heard of the broken hip. I kept saying, no, 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 because I wanted him to be here so badly. But God had other plans. Uh, but he was, for the most of you know, that he was faithful here every Sunday right up until a week before uh, the broken hip. So the second one on the list happens to be uh, Doris Frank Bittner. And Doris is with us today, if you would like to stand, Doris. Doris has been a member here for 80 years. The second one. She got a f special call last, uh, yesterday and said, do you think you could make it today? And she called me back and said, well, we'll try. So we're certainly glad you could come. The third one on the list is Joanne Bowen, and Joanne has been a member here for 79 years. And I know Joanne didn't feel that she could come today, but Joanne, I know you're online not missing a word today. So we congratulate her as well. The next one is Janice Sinclair Winger Kohler. And Janice has been a member for 76 years. She's over here. The next one is uh, Viva Sadler Brindle. She is a patient in, uh, at Menahaven and is not here, but uh, she has been a member here for 75 years. Uh, I guess Regina's here. I didn't see Regina coming in. Uh, yeah, she's over here in the back corner. It's her mother, uh, Regina uh, Busco's mother. The next one is here, and that's Ray Kaufman. He didn't know about this, but I said to him when he was here last week, are you planning to be here next week? He, well, he said, you never know from day to day, but he said, I'll certainly try. So I was hoping and I was glad when I saw he made it. Uh, he has been a member for 74 years. And the last one on the list for 70, jo uh, Joan e Swartz Eby just made it with 71 years. So all of these names will be listed in an anniversary booklet, which we've prepared. It looks like this, along with a lot of other information, uh, some, uh, some of our early history and, and bringing it up to date as to what uh, our ministries are today. 
The, these will be available after the service. We didn't want to give them to you before because we didn't want you reading these in church. I always like to make people chuckle. So they will be available at each of, of the doors uh, as you leave. Be one uh, per family will be available. Jim Charlton, and I didn't see Jim. I don't know if Jim came today or not. Oh, yeah, he's back there. Uh, I want to thank Jim especially for doing the writing of this book. Uh, we did take some information from the book that was prepared 25 years ago and then updated it and changed it somewhat. Uh, so we hope you will enjoy the booklet. And I certainly don't want to forget the inside the booklet you'll see other uh, names of people that served on the committee and some of them have worked very hard uh, and, and even today in preparing uh, the lunch and you're certainly all welcome to stay for lunch. Don't worry that you didn't make a reservation. Uh, we were preparing for a pretty good turnout and so I, I think there'll be enough to go around so please stay for lunch. So the second part of what I want to talk about and this will take probably a little bit longer. I didn't time myself and I don't know how much time I have but some of you know I like to talk. When we first started thinking about this anniversary celebration, which we started back soon after the beginning of the year, and I don't know where I got this idea, but uh, I started thinking, I wonder how many families that are still participating in the church today might have been here for a long, their families might have been here for a long time. And so we kind of decided, well, we're going to start looking to see how many families would have been uh, a part of this congregation for four or more generations. And so the criteria was either a member or that you attend here, either past or, or present. We didn't want to exclude anybody that was attending, but not necessarily in the membership roles. So when we started to do that, and I'm saying we, uh, Maria Gustinelli, who's over here, I believe, in, on the sidelines today, uh, she and I worked on this since last winter. I think the first computer uh, entries I saw was last February. And believe it or not, I had no idea when we started how many families we would find, but we found 25 families that are still active here now that qualify for four or more generations. So you're thinking, well, how did they do that? Well, if you've heard of newspapers.com, uh, you can pull up obituaries pretty easily. And what does the obituaries tell you? Well, pretty often it tells you what church you were a member of. It also gives you your dates, uh, your when you were born, when you died, and who your parents were. And so through that research, and, and Marie's really a whiz at, at that uh, sort of thing, and so between the two of us, uh, we were able to accomplish this. We actually found a couple of families that have, would you believe, seven or more generations. Some have more than one family line. The earliest member joined in 1861, and that happens to be Joanne Bowen's great-grandmother. But I will say that most of them, uh, the, the very oldest generations that we could find, were either in, joined in, either in late 1800s or early 1900s, and some, of course, more recent. I think I'm going to take the time, if Pastor Steve doesn't mind, because uh, you're probably thinking, well, who are these people? Many of them are here today. I was looking around. I know a, a couple of them are traveling uh, this week and, and are not here. But I'm going to read the names as I read the names. I'm going to ask uh, any family members connected with that name, spouses included, of course, uh, will all be recognized uh, at the end if you care to stand. So the first one is Robin Barrick, and I believe they are traveling. And the second one would be Joanne Bowen, and she's watching online. Uh, Reggie Brindle and Regina Busco, if you'll stand, please. Kim Brookins and Tammy Schuster. Penny Buckus. 
Pat Bulger, Sandy Horton, and Pam Edwards. This fam family stand with you too. Any families that are here. Chris Culler, Karen Davis, Jed Dietrich, Kevin Fitz, Steve Gillespie, Nina McIntyre, Jackie Rock and Terry Stevens, Diane Salter and Paula Hepfer, Sam Schatzer, Dave Stevens, Mike Stauffer and Greg Stauffer, and Scott Turner. Let's give those folks a hand as well. Thank you. Most of those families, if not all, have already received this booklet, but we made them available for anybody that's interested in, in looking at, uh, at all of this information we've compiled. And these two, so look for a green book. These two will be available as you leave today. Also, I want to call your attention to the displays that we have over here in this room. Uh, to my left, to your right, uh, we've gotten out a lot of our uh, historical items, and I uh, think we've pretty well labeled things, but we'll be over there if you have any questions. Some of you took time when you came in uh, to look around when you came in as well, but uh, if you didn't, we hope you can do that at the end of the service as well. And also, there's display cases in the hallways, and we've been uh, changing some of those, as you know, the, those of you that are here on a regular basis. Uh, so check those out, too. So I don't know where we go from here, except that uh, as far as the celebration, I, th I think we're probably pretty well, I think we've done a pretty good job, really, uh, throughout this year. And um, I certainly want to be grateful for all of these folks that have gone before us in these many generations of, of ancestry and certainly pray that we will continue to carry on as a congregation at First Church. Thank you. So I'm going to ask Diane Salter if she come forward. She has some thoughts to share on First Church's ministry over the years. I would need to begin with a thank you for being a church that nurtured me in all of this for most of my years. One of the things I knew about this congregation was that there were lots of people that loved Jesus and they loved me. And they did all they could to support me on that journey. When Pastor Steve commented to me, he said, I'd like you to remember some of the missions of the church and ask about this. And as I pondered that thought, Mrs. Irma Zug was the first person that came to my mind that put in my mind and heart an incredible um, passion for discipleship and teaching so that people might come into the kingdom of God and, and learn to know Jesus. But it was rooted in an outgrowth of being a missionary. And I always thought of her as a home missionary because the tragic part of Irma Zug was that she and her husband had been called into um, the mission field in Africa and on the boat there, her husband became ill and died, and she returned back to Chambersburg and poured all of her passion for mission and ministry into that. One of the things that she worked hard to do was to see that the community knew we were here alive and well, and I clearly remember her vacation Bible school with literally 250 children here. And I remember my senior year in high school as I was putting these pieces together, she asked me if I would be her assistant at that event that year and to work and to do that. And I, I just cannot help but be incredibly grateful for her asking me to do that. 
I think it was an early start. But as we look at the congregation, it was this congregation that built this little stone church on this. 20 years later, they determined that they were called to mission outreach to grow. So in 1842, they established what was known as a mission Sunday school. And they um, had a house down in the center part of the wilderness <laughs> that you were speaking of, Pastor Steve. <laughs> and they called that the Sunday school schoolhouse. And after they started, this is really important, I think, they had a team of eight people. You know, ministry doesn't happen with just one person. You have a person that may have the idea, but is generated with a team. They had eight teachers that went to that school, and they had 33 pupils there. After a year, they decided even though the church up here in this location was small, they'd be better suited to do what their mission was to bring people into the kingdom of God right here in the church. So in 1843, at one o'clock on Sundays, after the whole service, they began Sunday school for this mission outreach church. And by the end of that year, they had 13 teachers and 98 students, a ratio of one to eight, indicating that in any kind of mission work, it's all about relationships. I would like to share with you what Jesus has done for me. Jesus modeled that as his discipleship, um, as he called his disciples to be disciples and then to make disciples. Fast forward to 1950, when the church here, 100 years later, began to be very aware that you grow a church when you invite other people. And I cannot imagine how this happened, but there is a story, and I saw it written in a paper, that on one rally day, because all members were asked to bring other people on rally day, there were 1,250 people in this church on one occasion um, on a rally day. And at one point they were designated as the largest Sunday school in the state of Pennsylvania. But the church always had youth and at least from the 1950s, I can testify an amazing youth, children, discipleship emphasis, which propelled them always onto mission. I can remember the house that was purchased, um, which is called the Youth House, and uh, we had some great times there, but there was drama for, for youth to participate in, there was music, and there was always great and wonderful team of leaders who led the children and youth ministries and, and never once did we meet without the practical devotions of how to live out what we've been taught. Just listing very quickly some of the, the missions that started from here, a young life which was already been mentioned that Bob Snyder did and out of the growth of that was a joyful noise singing group that went out to sing at other churches and places. Uh, that was composed of at least 20 uh, different types of denominations of high school kids. And then there was a mission fair that was started by a little girl named Stephanie Martin who knew that Bob and Bobby were leaving Young Life and going to be uh, missionaries in Africa. And she went to her Sunday school teacher and um, ask her if it was possible for the, the, us to have what she called um, a mission fair because she wanted to raise some money to help send Bob and Bobby to Africa. Out of that, um, certainly some of you will remember um, Marketplace, which was geared to bringing other children from the community in uh, a Sunday school that was, was just out and open and everybody knew about it. Then there was summer neighborhood ministry when children in the neighborhood were coming into the church to use the bathroom in the summer and wanting to get drinks at the fountain and it was uh, 
becoming a bit of a problem, so summer neighborhood ministry was started, and then the after-school program was started, and then 40-some years ago, work camps and mission trips were all started. All the while, the church has been known for its strong missionary support um, for missions that were sent out to other places as well as the community, and certainly that mission support was in places that people went in the United States and abroad as well. Some of you will remember the walk through Bethlehem where we had hundreds of community people come through and experience um, a mini sight and sound in our midst as Christ was born. And then 25 years ago this very month, and interestingly enough, 26 people attended. I was just the 26 that you mentioned. But after going two by two around the neighborhood for a couple weeks prior to when we started, just knocking on the doors and saying, hi, we're from First Church up there. We want to be the church. Will you come and join us? That's how it all started. So Hungry Hearts, um, Ron Renschel prepared the first meal, and um, Ed Asbury, I have to give a shout out to him. He was a what I call the, the chairman of the, the board. Uh, that was just a, a phrase, but he garnered a team that supported that effort for the whole time that I was involved personally with, with that ministry. The common denominator to all this is a team. Individual people are touched and called and chosen to do ministries, and then collectively a team follows and unwraps and seeks God's will together and builds relationships so that many more might come. Those called to ministry from this church, and, and uh, in addition to the Snyders, uh, certainly Ray Kaufman was Fruit Belt Farm Workers and Prison Ministry, and Don Baker from this church also did outreach and missions kind of thing. Another one of those people, the little girl that started the mission fair, Stephanie Martin Haley, now is an executive director of the Westminster Rescue Mission and Addiction Healing Center, as well as being the largest food redistribution center in that county. I tell you this because it's how the sparks of advancing the kingdom of God works. Talking with Janet just a few weeks ago, recently on their farm in a pond, eight people were baptized on a cold October Sunday because they had recovered and were pressing on in their faith, being brought in to the kingdom of God through the ministry of that rescue mission. For 200 years, this church has been open to being disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. And when we do it, it's so very important. We follow the, per the perfect example of Jesus who loved people into the kingdom of God. We imitate God as dearly beloved children of God, following the example of Christ who gave himself up for us, a precious and holy calling to follow Jesus 200 years and continuing. May the Lord be with us as we do it. Before we um, sing, let's just have a moment of prayer. Lord, we thank you for the history of this congregation. We thank you, Lord, for the testimony of the people that went before us. We thank you, Lord, for the example that they set. We thank you, Lord, for the work that they established that continues to bless people and lifts up Jesus. And we pray, O oh Lord, that their their testimony, their witness to us will inspire us to yet further works 
uh, for the kingdom of Jesus Christ, that he might be lifted up among us as Lord and Savior. In his name we pray. Amen. Let's stand together as we sing our concluding uh, hymn, God of the Ages. <clears throat> May the God of ages past, and the God of ages today, and the God of ages yet to come, guide your hearts and your minds in ever-increasing faithfulness to his Son, Jesus Christ, that you might do his will, that you might share his witness, that you might be his servants wherever you go, whatever you do, to his glory. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, as, as we... Sorry, Linda. I've been asked to say a grace before we leave. Lord, we ask that as we leave from this place and go to the Fellowship Hall, or to the Family Life Center, Lord, that you'll bless our fellowship gathered around those tables as we continue the conversation. And as we share the meal, bless the food that's prepared and those that have prepared it for us, we ask in Jesus' name.